I want to ask you about comedy and tragedy because you seem equally at home in a world of drama and tragedy and you have a funny bone as big as your leg. I don't know many performers who can, or actors, who can have both those in them so deeply. Well, I don't think I've approached comedy or tragedy as technical specialities. It seems to me, if you work it out, what it means. So I don't approach comedy in a, in a particularly timing situation. Right. Yeah, where well, you meet a lot of comedy, you know, or that we, you say it this way, you say it that way, and I know that it, it works. But I haven't, I, I'm not fast enough to think about what is the way to do it, as well as remember the line at the same time, you know. I, I, so I can't remember all those things. It's like, you know, it's like having a subtext. I can't actually say the text and have a subtext because if I start thinking about the subtext, I forget what the fucking text is. It's, it seems too complicated for me. So it seems to me if you just work out what the character wants, what what's it's about, and you know, all these things, if it's if it is funny writing, now that may it's not entirely true. I have a sort of native, or you know, uh, instinct for timing, I guess. And I do. You're pretty lucky in Wedding for Godot as well. Oh God, laughs, laughs, can't they laugh? Rolling laughs. Oh, they were rolling laughing about that. But there's something about your sense of your instinct to hear the absurd in situations that you don't do anything about, but it's there. And I feel, we as an audience, we feel this guy, Eric, the actor, understand the absurdness of that moment. And that gets me excited, and that gets me into the lab. Well, I may not understand the absurdness, but I do actually enjoy things being absurd. And so part of the way I look at life, in a way, it's kind of absurd, <laughs> you know? It's like, and maybe that's just an escape, an escape in a way, to go, so, to make it less serious in a way. To think, well, after all, it is kind of absurd. You know, I mean, well, it is. I mean, we live, we're born to strike the grave, for God's sake. How much more absurd can you get? A brief flash of light. Yeah, yeah. Earth is once yeah, more. Yeah. No. Because it's you, you know, you at the very beginning describing being stage manager under the flap with the little fog thing, and then rushing back to put on the constable thing and coming on for two lines I and mean, it's an absurd beginning to uh, absurd beginning to a, a long and wonderful artistic career but and I do think relish that, in the telling of right right it. I do think though that that's a wonderful occupation for humans to do to tr to do little funny tricks like that in order to entertain other human beings I think that's such a high calling <laughs> I do I really do rather than you know perfecting a new rifle or going out and killing somebody <laughs> or you know making a million yeah. dollars on the stock exchange these are all wonderful things to be doing but to be crawling it's like it's, to me there's something delightful that I got to crawl in this with a little smoke machine all in the aid with a record going shh, 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 oh, shh, shh, yeah. and because everybody had to make believe and there's something to me that goes, this is such a wonderful way for humans briefly to spend their time with children. Or then it's not like children, it's because it's adult believing, but making believe. And because with our imagination and joining to these strange, and you know, being able to, com to, to join to each other, you can't imagine what you are in order to connect to you. I have to use my imagination as well as to hear you. I have to, you know, to imagine all these things. And live theater to me is still the deepest voodoo I can think of. Much more than film. Voodoo or doo-doo? No, voodoo. <laughs> it can be doo-doo, but out of doo-doo you get great stuff. I mean, you have to have quantity in order to get quality. People have to practice and practice and practice. So, and you have to have a lot of shit in order to grow the mushrooms or whatever we're going to, you know, our, our metaphor is. But the fact that in a live performance that we can all be alive in real time, in our real lives, and yet the audience is an audience, and yet every seat has a different perspective. Right. That doesn't happen in film. We all see the same thing. It doesn't matter where we're sitting, really. But in theater, man, if you're up close, it's different than if and you run seat over. And yet that, so that individual and the group, that interchange, watching other people bravely imagine, and when it starts to work, it's the best. 